So if you've been following my YouTube channel, you do know that I've been tracking statistics from a tournament performance of various card combinations like this one. And you might also know that I'm trying to establish and get an understanding of a CDH combo tier list. Which made me naturally look into this specific combo where Spellseeker is a one card combo. And I've made a combo tutorial for it, link in the description below of the video if you want to take a look at how exactly this thing works out in the details. But before jumping to that potential video, you might want to take a look at this picture you're currently watching right now. This is the specific performance of that combo, or these five cards together. So in my data collection I have currently 17,114 tournament entries. And from those we have 117 that have entered into tournaments with Brain Freeze, Ephemerate, Final Fortune and Spellseeker and Unwell Breach in them, excluding Ad Nauseum. And those 117 is getting an average win rate of 21.54. And that's a bad outcome, this is indicating that this is not really working out. Which would naturally mean that we can simply put this combo in the lower section of that futuristic combo tier list that I'm working on. But it made me keen and interested in looking into Spellseeker more in detail. So this is not a video about that specific combo, this is a video about how good is actually Spellseeker performing inside the CDH current meta. And yeah, spoilers, this is the outcome. But I will try to prove my point in why you should probably cut Spellseeker from your decklist and why it's kind of bad. So we currently have this picture, but what if we actually move Spellseeker and Ephemerate to the exclusion? So suddenly it got a lot better. We have 2878 decks that are all, all playing Brain Freeze, Final Fortune, Lion's Eye Diamond and Undul Bridge, but now we are also excluding Ephemerate and Spellseeker. And suddenly the win rate is like 26 points, uh, yeah, perfect 26. That's a huge improvement. And we're also looking into something like the player preference, because we have 117 players that have done this, where you have 2,878 players that have chosen to exclude Spellseeker from their decklist. So it's not just the player, the, the data performance of win rate and such, it's also showcasing that like, yeah, people are opting away from Spellseeker. But what about Spellseeker in general? So here we have Born Upon the Wind, Cyclonic Rift, Demonic Tutor, Final Fortune and Spellseeker being the fifth card. We have 47 decks that have included all of these five cards. These are four cards that are pretty good to tutor for with Spellseeker, but the win rate is still 21.40. Not so good. And when we exclude Spellseeker, we basically have the exact same four, but we move Spellseeker into the exclusion. The inclusion rate increases dramatically from 47 to 994 and an increase in win rate by 26.12. We also have this variant, we have Adnos, Lotus Petal, Spellseeker and Underworld Breach. We have 170 decks that have been playing this, this is basically Grixis, Inala is a big contributor to this uh, number. But the win rate is 20.67. And I can really tell you that Adnos and Andor Breach are some really good cards in this format. So now we're pairing like some really strong, super popular cards like Lotus Petal, super popular, usually getting a very high win rate. Adnos, Breach gets usually really good win rate. And then suddenly we're throwing in Spellseeker to the collection and boom, the win rate drops to 20.68. Not good. We can also take a look at this combination, so we have Lotus Petal, Orcish Bowmaster, Spellseeker, Talion, the Kindly Lord and Andul Breach. All of these four cards are usually very good, Orcish Bowmaster and Talion are usually receiving a very good win rate when I'm looking into variations when you play them. Andul Breach, Lotus Petal once again really good and then suddenly we're adding in Spellseeker to the mix and the win rate is not that impressive anymore, 21.15. For fun, I decided to actually take a look at Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard as a bonus because they are really good at finding that Doxed Extortionist and you might start to include the third to the mix Spellseeker as well. Phantasmal Image is also a very good card here together with Doxide. Doxide and Phantasmal Image are usually receiving a very high play inclusion 
and a very good win rate. But as you can see, it's not very popular. Only 17 decks have played all of these five cards together and they are receiving a 17.57 average win rate, Inclu excluding some uh, anti-ETB effects like Hushbringer, Hush Griff and Torpor Orb. The result is also very small, like 17 is very small, and that is also an indication that people are kind of opting away from this. People don't want to play these five cards together. And to prove a point, let's just do this. So here we have a Dockside Extortionist and Phantasmal Image. And like I promised, these two cards together are usually receiving a very good win rate. So we have 1991 decks that have played that have included both while excluding Imperial Recruiter, Recruit of the God, and Spellseeker. So there you go. Apparently don't play those. I actually also took a look at including Imperial Recruiter together with Dockside and Phantasmal Image. As you can see here, 300... This is not Spellseeker anymore, this is just Imperial Recruiter. I'm throwing this in as a bonus because we're kind of on the kind of subject. So 328 decks have been playing these three cards with a win rate of 23.82. But as you can see here, excluding Imperial Recruiter seems to be the better choice and also the more popular choice. But maybe there is a deck out there where Spellseeker will suddenly get a green win rate and I found one. So Isset, we are only looking at the red-blue color identity, as you can see there, Isset. And we are also forcing the inclusion of the Dockside, Spellseeker and Undual Breach. And boom, we have 511 decks that are playing all of these four cards together and they are receiving an average win rate of 22.59 which is suddenly a good positive thing. So now it looks like Spellseeker might have a place in colors when you only have blue and red because you are basically lacking tutors in those color identities. But of course we should also experiment with excluding Spellseeker. And suddenly the win rate increased by not having it inside your decklist. So once again, here we have 511 decks that are including Spellseeker in their Isset color identities. And we have 3,678 players who are excluding Spellseeker from their Isset color identity. And they are receiving a much better performance of 24.73 average win rate. Indicating that you don't need Spellseeker in your blue red color identity commander decklist. And the answer is quite simple, because in Isset Colors, you're usually just drawing into your win cons. You're not really tutoring for them, you're naturally getting them somehow. So let's summarize. This was a very short video looking into specifically the card Spellseeker with various potential combinations where you're usually playing Spellseeker. And then every combination we basically looked at, it was an exclusion. Don't play it, it's not doing good for you. When you look at statistics, you really need to be careful because it's very easy to get a wrong painted picture for you. But we were looking at a lot of different angles of where you could potentially have a spell seeker in your decklist. And in every single case we found and such, it's not really looking good for you. In the end, it's just power creeped. It's a little bit too expensive. Three mana is just too much. And even when you are lacking tutor options like blue red, it still didn't feel the appeal to have it in the decklist, like they were performing better without it still. I hope you got something out of this very short video, and thank you so much for watching. And I will be back with more card statistics in the future. Until then, have a nice day.